We keep cracking it. Welcome to Today I Work On It. Today I'm gonna to go over how I install floor tile on a shower floor. And I'm also gonna recommend what kind of floor tile I should use. I've been getting a few questions about this, so I wanna get into it right away. The first step you wanna do, this is a smaller format hexagon tile, and full disclosure, these hexagon tile are on sheets, they're on mosaics, as you can see, and they're not gonna be perfect because it's glued on to the back of a sheet. It's impossible to have the computer nail every single piece of the hexagon. So you might have some tile that just don't line up right. Like you could see like this tile right here. It's off a little bit, but that's just the way it is. So if you're working for a client, working, doing it yourself, you need to temper expectations. And I just actually showed my client uh, what I was talking about. So just keep that in mind. So I laid out the floor and I also like these smaller format tile because there's grout lines that are anti-slip. A lot of people ask me why don't you put a bigger format tile in your showers and it's because they're slippery. Last week I was getting out of my tub actually onto my regular shower floor and I fell and I broke my butt. I hit my face right here on the shower glass because I didn't have any rugs down and it's a large format tile. And Slippery when wet, I'm super serious, you could get super hurt. So uh, I wouldn't recommend doing a large format tile in a shower. So the first step is done, I laid it out. I have my measurements here. I have 58 and a half by 30 and a half. And what I do is, I've been watching some videos, people have been using glue guns and using like wood little Luan strips. I actually have one right there. I feel like it's a little bit of overkill. What I do is I use tape. So I mark this out basically, I take about a quarter inch off on each side of the wall. So say the measurement's 60 inches, I'll come out with 59 and a half. And so that's why we have, it's actually 59 by 31. I took a quarter inch off on each side because I'm putting a pretty thick tile and that gives me um, my measurements. Now, if you have a thinner tile, you gotta also keep that in mind. You have to be a little bit more exact of going around your perimeter. This is a tile ready base, so I know it's super square. If you're doing like a custom base, you might have to like be a little, it might not be square, you might have to mess with the measurements a little bit. So let's uh, get some tape on this tile and let's see where the best layout is gonna be. I wanna make this look nice and clean because I, I want all the tile to be basically the same. So we got the measurement of 30 and a half and I'm gonna measure, okay, what do we got? That's 30 and a half right there. So if I bring in, if I go like this, that's 30 and a half, if I go like that, that's 30 and a half. That probably looks good right there because I have a nice full tile on each side. So that's gonna be my mark. So I'm gonna go there and then what I'm gonna do is I will measure in from this tile. So it's five and an eighth. I'm gonna come down this way. I'm gonna go five and an eighth. And then over here we got uh, one and three quarters. So I'll come down one and three quarters. And then I'm gonna get a four foot level and then I'm going to just, I'm gonna check the grout lines a little bit. Like I said, you know, it's what they're hexagons and they could be a little funky. That quarter inch helps me on each side so I can like move stuff around. So I'm gonna go with that measurement. So that is the line that I'm gonna use. They all look, yeah, it looks pretty much the same. So it should be pretty equal on each side. So let's go over here. Next up, now I have my two lines. Now we're gonna get another measurement. So we have 58 and a half. So where's 58 and a half gonna work out? So let's, let's go right there and see what happens. 58 and a half puts us, so it looks like I'm just gonna come in a little bit about that much. And what do we have again? We're gonna have a full tile to work with, so it's gonna look good. So 58 and a half is here, and then I'll mark, 58 and a half here. So I'm gonna eyeball that initially and then I'm gonna measure off to the point because you know, every tile is gonna be different. So I have one inch. So it's gonna be one inch off of here. So one inch and then we'll go one inch. So we'll make a mark here. And that's, that's pretty good, one inch. And also I know these tiles are gonna be square so when I cut it, I'll know I'll be able to place a massage 
the tile and make it look as good as possible, even though these mosaics are off a little bit on the sheet. So same thing here, we'll go off, it's probably gonna be an inch. Yeah, I have a pretty good eye, it's an inch off. So I'll go an inch right here and an inch right here. Take the level. And that's, that's the first step. Now I know what I gotta cut. And if you notice, what I did was I made this a little bit bigger and I also staggered each row. So they're not, all the mosaics are not in the same plane. I did that because it will hide your eye more from where the mosaic sheets go. Now that everything is laid out, I'm gonna tape it and uh, cut it. Last little piece of uh, work we gotta do here before I cut these lines out is check the trench. So I have three and a half, which looks nice, and then I have six and five eighths, give or take. But I'll have a nice full towel here, and I'll have a nice full towel to work with there. That looks really good. So now, these tiles are big enough, I actually can use a dry cutter. Let me get my dry cut tile saw, and then let me cut these up. You can go two ways on cutting these tiles. You could use a grinder or you could use this dry tile saw. These tiles are big enough I could use a dry tile saw and that's what I'm going to use. Now, that's why I set up this whole uh, floor up here. If you have to use a grinder, I recommend going downstairs, going outside, getting like a piece of lawn like this, and then you could cut this all out with blue tape and a grinder with the luan underneath it. That's the best way to do it. Again, since I'm gonna use dry tile and my trusty nippers, I'm gonna cut this tile this way. So let me cut this all up. One very pro tip on these, do not use a wet saw. If you use a wet saw, this is all this matting is just gonna disintegrate and your tile is gonna fall off and you're gonna have a nightmare situation. Everything that's cut with this, you need to use a dry saw. There's the other ways you could do it, but I just feel like this is the best way to do it. Uh, this is my way to do it, so don't use a wet saw, keep it dry if you're using a grinder to cut all this stuff up. Seriously, the hardest tile to work with to make it look right. So what I'm going to do is I move some tile away because I want this back row to look good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mark right here. I'm going to measure what I got. What I got is one and an eighth full. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure here. So this is one and an eighth full. I'm going to come down. I'm going to go one and an eighth full and I'm going to make a level line. So make it like a 16th of an inch back and then go to the end of the trench and make that line. So it should be good. Next up, since these tile are, are together, now I'm gonna make another line and I can see it right here. I can see where this goes. I'm gonna put a line there. So I'm gonna pull back that one tile because I can see that line right there. I'm gonna put this back where I think it's gonna go. And it's the same thing. I'm gonna see what happens there. So this looks like if I go like this, and I'm within line, it's a lot of feeling it out. All tiles different, but the hexagons are really, uh, they're finicky. So I think I got my line. I got my line here. I'm gonna run this across like so. And then what we're gonna do is, right, I'm gonna throw this line on here. I'm gonna get a measurement. This is what I wanna know. What do we got here? I got three and an eighth full, and then I got three and an eighth full. That means it's a straight looking trench, is that's what I want. Now I'm gonna put this back, because now I don't need to see, and I'm going to place this as carefully as I think where it's gonna go, and then I'm gonna run, I'm gonna push down on the level, and I'm gonna make a straight line. So that looks pretty good. Lastly, over here, 
Same thing, I'm just gonna cut, I'm gonna make it look clean. I'm gonna cut it back just like that. So that, that should work. So let's cut this up and see what happens. All right, first piece is cut. I gotta maybe, I have to maybe clean it up a little bit right there, but it looks really good. I like getting these end pieces cut first and then I work on the middle. The next cut will be this piece right here. I'm doing it with a grinder outside and just taking my time with it. So that's what you gotta do. I'm gonna keep cracking it. This time, you can see I broke it twice. Well, you so broke it, broken it once. So I had to pop it out and not be super careful and super slow with it. Guess what, even the professionals have that issue. But that looks really good. You can see there's the crack tile. That's life. Uh, now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna dry cut all of these. They look pretty good, so let's start doing that. That is all prepped and ready to go. So now we're gonna do, let's take a look, vertical, like going straight down. It's a little tough to see, but I'm gonna try to make the grout lines as best I can. And then I did put the trench in, the trench looks perfect. It looks really nice, so I, uh, I like it. So let's mortar it up. Since it's a tile ready base, I'm using the Ultraflex LFT mortar. I'm gonna pull up the grate, like so, if it's perfectly. Now I'm gonna mark each piece of mosaic sheet. So when I put them down, I know what's up. So let's do that right now. And when I mark them, what I do is I put these down first, so I slide the tile on top of each other so no mortar gets onto the tile. I would 100% skim coat the bottom. So I'm going with quarter inch by quarter inch square notch straws because these tiles are a little thick. There's a little bit of thickness to them, so that means they're a little bit heavier. And again, it's so weird to work with this modified mortar. instead of working with, with the red epoxy. So crazy. I really want it. So this is the first time I'm using uh, the LFT with the trench. I really want to cover that black part of the trench up. I want to get a good uh, stick, so. Definitely need more mortar. Now we're gonna clean it up. We don't want a lot of excess mortar on here because it's gonna ooze right out of the pound. We don't want that. That's pretty much ready to go. Make sure before you put your, your uh, tile down, clean the trench. Me. You don't have to worry about it later. Alright, next up, we're gonna put number one down. massaging all these tiles so they look good. Last step is I'm gonna put in the grate just so I know it's good. So let's squeeze it in there. 
perfect. That's looking pretty good, so let's wrap up this video. That's a wrap on this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you picked up some tips and tricks on how to install a hexagon floor tile that goes in a shower like this, temper expectations, and end result, it looks awesome. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like it. If you have any questions or comments, please ask in the comment section. And if you like more of my home improvement videos, which I got a lot going on, please subscribe. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.